invite somebody who's been one of the leaders of the industries from many different pers perspectives. She's been leading up the leading media agency, she's been leading up Google, and now she's taking the lead for a new entrepreneurial venture. Stina Honkama, please come up on stage. Hey, welcome back to the science stage. Have a seat. I want to have Klaus Dahlén on stage. Klaus, where are you? Elected Marketing Director of the Year, the Country Manager of Mr. Green. And I want to have Nigel, Nigel Gilbert, where are you? From AppNexus, VP Sales. Come up, have a seat. Take, sit down in the sofa, wherever you like. There is fine, next to Klaus. So, what I want to understand now is what is happening to the marketing arena that we are redrawing all the time. And I want to hear different perspectives on that. You are a marketing director. No, you're not. You're actually a country manager, but you won the marketing director prize, top marketer in Sweden. You have both the perspective of a media agency, Google, and now United Screens. And you are a technology platform that just enables people to optimize and do things a hell of a lot smarter. So we have different perspectives. And I, first I would like to, to, what is United Screens for the ones that are ignorant here in the audience, should there be anyone? Okay, so we are helping our partners that could be YouTubers, a media company or music companies uh, to can queer YouTube. To actually, we help them with YouTube, we help them with rights on YouTube, on content rights, music rights, and we help them make more money. So it's, 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 it, you're using the existing platform for YouTube to create a new kind of TV proposition yeah. for brands and with brands. Exactly. Yeah. And, and how do you see the marketing arena uh, changing from, from before? Uh, what are the new things that are relevant? And I what think does it's the new marketing mix look like? Yeah, I think it's interesting I mean, to see the, the introduction you did earlier today. Because if we look at the internet usage, I mean, it has totally exploded in Sweden and in the, in globally right now. And I mean, that's thanks to the broadband penetration, it's, but it's also thanks to the smartphone penetration that is in Sweden among the highest in the, in the whole world. And if we look at what are we doing online today on the internet, what we're doing is actually we are more and more uh, watching video online. So we can see a lot of studies that more than half of the population are watching at least one video online per day. Mm. So I would say very much, I mean, online, of course, that's the new media arena. But what is the, the biggest trend online today? Well, that's online video. So TV is moving online. Yeah, absolutely. And do you see that as when, when you sort of when you look at campaigns and when you sort of build a brand, what are the new tools that you're that you're using and how do you look at spending the marketing mix? And it's a very interesting question, uh, and I have to do the for fast forward thing here. <laughs> uh, the time has changed a lot. I mean, 10 years ago, we, 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 uh, we did our marketing plan that lasted for 6 to 18 months. It was phase 1, 2, 3, etc. Now everything is in real time, and it's such an amazing time to be a marketeer. Um, uh, working with the, uh, the marketing mix, uh, we constantly can buy our uh, media or banners in real time. We can use uh, uh, dynamic banners and change our content on every day and, and produce new messages but and Do you actually do that? Because everybody yes. say that and then yes. very few people do. But you actually do that. You yes. sort of, but it takes a lot of effort to be using the data and to be sort of making the effort. Absolutely, but it's worth it. I mean, a, a marketeer, uh, we'll probably talk about creativity today, but uh, a, marketing's, uh, a marketing person's everyday life is a lot about hard work and, and using the, the tools at hand, technology-based and Excel sheets, etc., to measure and track what every move you make in order to make the right business decisions. Uh, so it's, it's a completely new landscape. And, and you're part of building that landscape. Uh, AppNexus, just, uh, if anybody doesn't know what AppNexus is doing, do you want to uh, share that? Is this on? Okay, great. So we have to take some responsibility for this because um, uh, I'm lucky enough to work with the guys that created this concept back in 2007. Um, we're a technology infrastructure company that allows buyers and sellers to make these decisions in literally milliseconds. Um, to give you an example of the scale of this now, we're processing probably 14 or 15 billion advertising transactions every day in real time. So that's over one or two million per second. And what is an advertising transaction, if you break it down? Of course, so a transaction can really be anything. In our case, we focus on display. Mm -hmm. So um, I go to Aftonbladet, 
as a user, of course. And then just before the banner comes up, yeah. what do you do then? Yeah, so I mean, it, it, obviously we give the tools to the buyer and seller. So it depends largely on what those guys are actually doing. Mm -hmm. But in the case of a seller, so for example, Shibstead, it's a, it's a great partner for us here in, here in the Nordics. Um, what those guys can do is capture the data that's coming in um, either via the ad server, so this could be anything from the browser to where you are based, uh, perhaps where you live, you know, what, what sort of behavior you've demonstrated previously. Um, they may have information on that person because they're logged in, mm. so therefore they may understand um, their age, their gender, their preferences, things like that. You put all of those things together, and then you can actually serve the individual something that's relevant not just to them, but also relevant to, to what they're doing at that particular time. Mm. So Sunday morning, they don't want to see an ad for, I don't know, um, a breakdown service. Maybe they want to see an ad for a holiday. Mm. Maybe if you're stuck in a tunnel in uh, Stockholm on a rainy Tuesday morning, you want to see an ad for a breakdown service. You know, that, 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 that's going to be much more relevant. So we allow people to make those decisions and ultimately use their data um, to make things more relevant. But what, what, what do you, sort of, how do you, with a plethora of things that you can do, and I mean, I think there's 400 marketing directors in the audience, and they have different products and different markets, and you have all the technology layers, and you get more data, and you get more channels. I mean, there's, there's a certain amount of anxiety <laughs> in being a marketing director nowadays. What are the sort of, what are the big buttons for marketeers? What are the things that they should invest more in? Obviously, YouTube, or, or how, how do you sort of, where would you spend the marketing budget today if you were at Karat? <laughs> Everything on United Screens. Yeah, of course. <laughs> no, uh, I mean, I think it's super important for the advertisers to, to follow the consumers mm -hmm. closely, closely, closely to see the trends, what is happening, what is happening with the, with the viewership, what is happening with the readership and the media consumption overall. I mean, I mean it's, it sounds very easy, but I think that's, that's the core. You have, you have to follow the, the consumers. And what, what is the role of data? It's important. If you study the data, you, you will see the new trends. And I mean, the, the, the cool thing now, I mean, with the internet available for everyone, 24-7, uh, thanks to the, our smartphones, I mean, all the data and all the super interesting studies, for example, on online video, is out there available for each and everyone. Mm. So, you, I mean, you don't need to just trust your media agency or your advertising agency. I think you can do a lot on your own. You've been, you've been doing, uh, I mean, you've been doing very humorous things. You've been doing a lot of traditional TV and also a lot of online. How do you sort of, how do you choose and how do you, I mean, everything from, from the, the Hamilton movie where, where Hamilton is playing on Mr. Green to, 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 uh, to, 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 to a lot of fun vir uh, viral things. What is sort of, some, what, what is the key strategy behind your marketing? Uh, the, the key strategy is, uh, when I entered uh, the gaming industry, I, I immediately started to do a customer survey and see the whole landscape. And uh, I saw that all the, the gaming companies, uh, they either begin or end with the word bet. And they all are associated to sport. Uh, and I found the blind, blind, blind spot in the, in the field of entertainment. And since I come from the entertainment industry, the, the music industry, it was quite natural for me to, to reposition our brand into entertainment. Mm -hmm. Because we're talking about uh, people's everyday entertainment. We have over 200 competitors in Sweden in the online casino gaming mm -hmm. industry, which is incredible and fun. But we also compete in t people's time. Uh, we compete with uh, TV, with movies, with books, internet surfing, etc. And that's where we want to be positioned mm. as a light entertainment um, service. No, because I remember when, when, when you started the company, I was like, what are idiots, that's never going to work. There are 200 competitors. And all of a sudden you started just showing up everywhere. So, and having a different flavor and doing things differently. Yeah. And that, that's uh, such a great uh, thing with, with Mr. Green as, as a brand. Uh, because it, it's, it has an X factor. When I started, actually, <laughs> my friend said, oh, no, so you're going to sell uh, corn on cans. <laughs> I said, no, it's Green Giant, mate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, we, we had, we had a, a journey to, to build the brand uh, with an X factor, but position ourselves with, with entertainment. And, mm -hmm. and uh, it has worked very well, actually. Um, so... Yeah, that, that's what we're doing. Mm -hmm. and, and there's uh, there's second screen, as we all know, because we sit with something 
82% of you do, in your lap all the time when you look at television. And we also, of course, have a second screen app here at Syme through Ex Machina. So the ones are on the app, I would like to know how you're feeling right now. Uh, so please, uh, the ones on second screen, just give me a sense of how you guys are feeling. Uh, this is how it's going to look later on. People are adding to it. We'll come back to that and see the results later on, Mats. <laughs> thank you. Uh, and I want to ask the panel, second screens and the connection between TV and what's happening. How do you see technology evolving there? Well, I think it's, it's a wonderful point to make. Um, one of the other big differences that we see now from, let's say, 10 years ago is that um, users just never switch off. They, they just don't disconnect. Uh, Klaus and I were talking backstage, we're saying, uh, I bet you use your iPad just before you go to bed. Uh, and as soon as you wake up, you reach for your phone. I'm sure I'm not unusual in that sense either. You know, we're constantly consuming. It, it, it just never stops. Mm. Um, so for that reason, you have to be able to understand, you know, what, what these moods are. It's not so much second screen. It's more that it's just the, it's the amalgamation of all of that behavior. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't really see any difference between a mobile device and, and, and a desktop device. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, people are using them for basically the same thing, mm -hmm. more or less. But do you um, think that when you connect it to the televisions, I know that, uh, you know, I can bet on Slatan in real time, time, but I can do it here. Yeah. And you know a lot more about me. How, how does that sort of, how can that fuel the, the, the real time bidding even more? Well, it, it, it makes it a better experience. I mean, the, the real time, when you put real time bidding in, um, you're also adding now a commercial element. So not only do you know that you're getting the person that you want when you want them, and also when they want to hear from you, mm. which is just as important, mm. um, you also know what the value is to you as a, as a buyer or a seller. So perhaps you're selling a piece of advertising for 100 sec. It's about 10, 10 euros, right, give or take. Yeah. Uh, and it could be worth 500 sec. You, know, you don't know. There could be 50 advertisers who are all interested in that guy yeah, right yeah. then. Um, maybe you're selling something for 500 sec and it's worth 5 sec. And the buyer's about to find out. You know, so it, it, the value comes into it once you put the real-time bidding aspect mm -hmm. in as well. So that you can actually get a lot more yeah. value for the clicks for the ones that is prepared to pay for them. Yeah, it, it's true value. It's more, it's more than it's true value. But aren't you sort of the, sell, the sales guy's worst nightmare? <laughs> you're dis, dis, you, 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 will there be sales guys when you, everybody Yeah, is? you have to have, I, I see, we hear this a lot, right? So um, this was the same in the UK. Um, you know, real-time bidding is now 15, 20% of the UK display market. Yeah. Um, if you fast forward to 2017, it's forecast to be something like 80%. Yeah, yeah. of the display market. But somebody has to make the decisions. Real-time bidding is just an execution tool. Right? You have to have relationships with your important buyers, your important sellers. Um, you, know, you have to understand uh, what the advertiser actually wants. Um, the sales guy, uh, if you have a valuable product, I mean, you take the Shipstead portfolio of sites, they've got context. They've got the user coming to see them mm. because they're giving the user something valuable. Mm. Um, if the user just went to a site with 10 ads on it, there's no exchange. You're not going to click the ad. You're not going to appreciate the experience. Um, to, there's, a, there's a very important exchange, I think, as part of that process. So that's on the te technological dimension. In the creative dimension, what works on YouTube? What, yeah. what do you see sort of travels virally? Are there any sort of uh, quick fixes that we can bring with us or remember? Yeah, right now, I mean, the biggest thing on YouTube right now is not that uh, ping pong guys, for example, from, uh, uh, from, from Stockholm. That's one of the viral things on YouTube going on right now. But as I was thinking on, uh, on, on creativity and on YouTube, what works on YouTube. I mean, we help our advertisers with, you know, commercials or sponsorships, the traditional ways. But we also help them with, you know, special collaboration with YouTubers. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, that's maybe the strongest way to reach the new super engaged audience is actually to work with the experts on, out there on YouTube already. Okay. So I think that's interesting. Also, all I would like to say on the, on the second screen thing that we talked about earlier, I think that's actually the proof that um, the, new cons the media consumption today is very, very interactive. Mm -hmm. I mean, as, as a media con uh, consumer today, you're not, you're not happy just sitting and reading a paper or watching uh, um, uh, traditional TV. You want to engage and you want to share what you are watching. Mm -hmm. And uh, on YouTube, for example, you can see that more than 50% on all the videos uploaded are shared with others. Mm. And we can also see, I mean, the, so the new social TV or online video viewing is not like, you know, you, you, you publish your video and then you have like one million views. Mm. Instead, it's, it's growing over time mm. because you don't need to sit in the same room together with your friends to share a moment. Instead, you can actually share it with others globally, around the world, around Sweden, uh, over um, a lot of weeks and so on. Mm -hmm. 
And it's, it's, it's really powerful. We, we launched also an entertainment product, Star Stable, which is the game for horse-loving girls that we launched here at Syme some year ago. And, and now we're coming out with more movies than Hollywood and Bollywood combined because the girls want to share their experience when playing. Yeah. So there's a number of thousand videos of people just filming their games on YouTube and that brings all the new users. So we get hundreds of thousands of new users just through the viral effects on YouTube, which yeah. is a really powerful tool. So that's why you have the, your answer on your, on, your, on your questions, actually. Make it so good that it's shareable mm -hmm. and that the audience mm -hmm. wants to share it because then you have the viral spread from, from the beginning. What do you think about TV then? TV as a traditional medium. You use a lot of TV. Uh, absolutely. And, and um, uh, the thing with, with, with TV is uh, it, it, uh, it works. It's very expensive. But before a second screen, or I'd rather say first screen, uh, because I watch TV through my mobile phone, uh, <laughs> uh, then we suddenly can start to measure our TV campaigns. Uh, and we can see exactly what time we're having TV commercials, and we can see the effect on traffic via the mobile phone. But like, for me as a marketeer, I'm also an investor. I invest the, the company's marketing funds in, in, in marketing. In, in, in order to get return on investment. And that's my job. And today the marketeer has become a business engine rather than a ten, <laughs> 10 years ago it was a well-educated hipster sitting there, it was creative. But TV is a big risk as well. If you have like 60 or 70% of your marketing budget allocated for TV, mm -hmm. what happens if the prices goes up 30% in yeah, 2014? Yeah. Then you have a big problem. So the marketeer today has to spread the risk uh, you have to be able to navigate and perform in all marketing channels. There That's is. an interesting way to look at it. You have a portfolio of investments and you have to manage your risk. That's the marketing director's new role. It, it, it's like mm -hmm. an entrepreneurship uh, or, or an investor. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. We will continue this discussion throughout the days here at Syme. But in the essence of time and not to see scary Indians, uh, we have to thank the panel now very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very much. Thank you.